a pregnant woman it's a waste of years to sit under an anointing that you don't respect it's a waste of years to sit under a man of God that you don't honor when you talk good about your father God begins to talk good about you when you defend your father God begins to defend you say it's not allowed but some of you you allow it but i have what is called self-control title of my message is called the importance of fathers let's all say the importance of fathers can we read first samuel first samuel 16 from verse 1 and the lord said unto samuel how long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing i have rejected him from reigning over israel Fill thine horn with oil. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king among his sons. I repeat again. For I have provided me a king among his sons which means Jesse was a father in Samuel said verse 2 how can I go if Saul hear it he will kill me and the Lord said take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Thou shalt anoint unto me, not unto you, but unto me, him whom I name unto thee. May we go to the book of Malachi. Chapter 4, Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament between Malachi and Matthew they are 500 years and it's called the silent years that period between Malachi and Matthew between the Old Testament some say 400 years some say 500 but it's 400 to 500 years and those years are called the silent years the silent years god was not speaking to men during that time that's why we don't read and authenticate or authorize any bible that was written during that time of silent years that's where there is a bible which came out which is called apocrypha the apocrypha bible we don't read it because these were men writing their own minds 
They were not writing under the inspiration. So when the canon of scriptures was done, those books were rejected and they were put in a Bible called Apocrypha, books that were written in the silent years. So we cannot authenticate them as authority scriptures. Is because scripture must have authority. Why? Because they, those books had no anointing. So we, we want uh, authorized, anointed scriptures that are authenticated. So they were canonized by theologians and they put them in a book. So when you read them, they can give you knowledge. But they are not authentic scriptures. They are not doctrine. We, we cannot discipline someone using those verses because we are not sure of their origin. Now, when you read Malachi chapter 4 from verse 6, which is the last verse, God is opening the New Testament with a relationship of fathers and sons. He is saying in verse 6, because this is the prophet Elijah who is being talked about in verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And I think the Elijah the prophet whom Jesus was speaking about, if you read your New Testament, you discover that Elijah came already. It was John the Baptist. So don't listen to anyone who declared that I am the coming Elijah. There are some churches that have declared their pastors as the Elijah that was to come. And there is one man who made a mistake in history of men who started a church uh, called End Time Message. It was called William Marion Branham. He declared himself Prophet Elijah and he said, I am an angel. And he wrote a book called The Spoken Word. He died in a case of an accident. A prophecy was given in America that this man is dying on Christmas Day because he has mocked the word of God. And William Marion Branham, for sure, according to the prophecy of John, uh, of Kenneth Huggins' son, he died on the Christmas Day. And uh, the, there are people who are still uh, following his scriptures because he was lost at a certain moment. He started very well. Even the pictures of his church or his books, you can see sometimes they picture him. People would see fire on top of his head and the angels. But he got lost along the way and he declared himself an angel. And he said there is no Holy Spirit. People must only listen to him. And he started writing books that are called the spoken word. So I encourage all my children, don't read those books. Because they will twist your mind. Whenever you see a book written, spoken word, don't touch that book. Because he wrote those books when he was lost. Many of the things that he was now doing, they were no longer from the Spirit. But the first, first books which he wrote were very powerful, but they are not found right now. Because they are no longer being printed. So I'm just saying some of these things. Verse 6, it says, He shall turn the heart of the fathers to, to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse let's just say he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to, the fa to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse so which means if the relationship between fathers and sons is not seen on earth god is saying i will come and smite the earth with a curse i will destroy the earth they must be a turning of the hearts of fathers to children and of the hearts of the children to their fathers oh just to lift your hand father i am praying that your people may see the importance of spiritual fathers in the mighty name of jesus we bless your holy name may we all say amen 
A spiritual father does not become a father biologically. Because a human being has nine fathers on earth. Every human being has nine fathers on earth. But there are three important fathers that are supposed to be reported to. The one that is most important is your heavenly father. Let's all say heavenly father. And the second one is your spiritual father. And the third one is your biological father who gave birth to you biologically. Those people are very important because especially the spiritual father and the biological father. Because if you don't honor your biological father who sent you to school, even if he didn't send you to school, but the fact that he was the one who was used by God to permit life on, your, on you. He is honored in heaven. And the Bible says, if you don't respect your biological father, God will cut your, your parents. If you don't respect your father and your mother, God will cut your ears on earth. They will be cut short. You die early. So it's important no matter how much your father, your biological father, doesn't like you or your mother criticize you or speak bad about you, I want you to learn to love them. I want you to learn to respect them because they were used by God to make sure that you come to life. You come to the earth here. Because God creates but his laws are laws that still stands. They must be a couple that must be used by God as an instrument of creation of a human being because a human being needs a flesh though the one that is inside you came from heaven because the you that i'm talking to right now it's not your body but it's your spirit because when you are on earth you must be in a body so the one who was used by god to carry you for nine months god wants you to respect that woman if she is still alive if they are not alive, but there are some people who took the father figure, who became your guardians, you need to honor those people because they are, the, they are the ones who made sure you are where you are today. So they become your parents whom you must honor because they are representing and symbolizing your biological parents who are no more alive. Are you hearing what I'm saying there? So those ones now, your biological father, it's obvious a person who is your biological father must be older than you. You cannot have a biological father who is younger to you. Otherwise, you, will be, you must be the father. But now in the spirit, we have got what we call spiritual fathers. Spiritual father does not become your spiritual father because of age. A spiritual father becomes a spiritual father because of the house that you are submitting under. If you are submitting under ego life assembly, every house is a father. Every house is an anointing. So I don't become your father because of my age. I become your spiritual father because of the Holy Spirit who is in me. So that's why it's very correct to see a 90 year old man in ego life kneeling before prophet and say, how are you my papa? How are you my father? They are not kneeling to the physical body because I'm called a man of God. What it means is there is a God in the man. So what they are honoring, what they are respecting is the anointing because the anointing, the Holy Spirit has no age. He is older than any person in this church. So he is the one who qualifies people to be fathers. I have released people like Pastor Emmanuel. He is a young man. But I have taught his church 
elderly women that are there that kneel and respect you are it's not worship but you are respecting the anointing that is in the man of god because let me tell you there is no anointing that can work for you when you don't respect it an anointing that you don't honor cannot work for you you have to honor that anointing that is in the man of god so that's what we call spiritual fathers and you don't become my spiritual son or my spiritual daughter because i have said it you are the one who must confess it that prophet jesus is my father i don't need to come to you to say you are as long as you are a son in this house and you decide to move from the level of seeing me as your pastor only and you begin to take me as your father then there are certain things that also begin to come to you because there are certain things that comes to members of ego life and certain benefits that comes to children of prophet blessing Jesus, to sons and daughters That's why it's important to market your father. I will explain some other things that you must do to get the anointing of your father. Because every house has its anointing. That's why when you come into ego life, there are certain significant things that begins to happen in your life without me even laying hands on you. I was saying in the morning service, there are things that you begin to see in your life, peace. If there was no peace in your family, when you come in this house, you begin to see peace. If there was no unity, you begin to see unity. If there was no love, you begin to see love. There is also prophetic healing and deliverance element that comes. Because that is the anointing of the house. And there is an element uh, which is significant of the prosperity of god you begin to have prosperity i i am telling you there is one thing that i know as long as you stay in this house you will drive a car you will own a house you will have money it takes your consistency it takes your patience it takes your sitting ability your loyalty and your submission as long as you are under my anointing there is another thing that I know that you will never die in a car accident. If you die in a car accident, uh, if you investigate that person, I am telling you, you will tru truly discover that they were no longer under my cover. They were maybe now going to my postal or now going somewhere at Mazibaba under a tree. They left the covering of my covenant. Because there are certain covenants that are here. That is, my children, Lord, are seated where they are seated. Let them get one, two, three, four, five. So just coming, I, I, I might not lay a hand on you. But just sitting on that chair, there are certain fundamental things that begins to happen in your life. But you must never be in a house yet you don't respect the vision of the house it's a waste of years to sit under an anointing that you don't respect it's a waste of years to sit under a man of god that you don't honor it's a waste of time brethren to sit under a vision that you don't follow a vision that you don't believe in let's all say it's a waste of years it's a waste of time to sit under a vision that you don't honor and believe in. Now we see the man of God being told by the Holy Spirit that I want you to anoint me a king. God is saying I have provided me a king for myself. But I want you to go to the house of Jesse the Bethlehemite. When you arrive there, 
I shall show you what you must do. I will show you what you are supposed to do. Now, I have taught this. Some who have been with me from Masih and so forth. I have touched even some of these scriptures. That imagine God wanted to anoint a king. And God had the name of the king. That the king that I want to anoint, his name is David. We have read this scripture. Though Samuel didn't know, but God knew. And David was in the bush. Why didn't God send the prophet with the horn of oil straight into the bush? Because it was easy, brethren. David was in the bush. Why did God have to trouble the prophet? For him to go to a certain house somewhere. When God knew whom he was supposed to anoint. He was supposed to just go in the bush and say, you young man, come here. Yeah, you are the first that I've seen. Just come, I'm anointing you, you are now king from today. But God honors fathers. For him to give you a mentor, you must be under a spiritual father. There are certain weddings that will never come to you until you are submissive to a father. There are certain blessings and a certain degree of prosperity that will never greet your end any day. As long as you are under a father. As long as you are not under a father. You must be under a man of God. Whom you say my spiritual father. Which means that man must have the authority to rebuke you. To sit you down when you make a mistake. To correct you and discipline you. He can say, my daughter, don't touch that microphone. I don't want you to sing for two months. And you, for sure you don't stand in front of a microphone for two months. And you still remain in a house. Because fathers are there to instill discipline. Mentors, they make you to have knowledge. But fathers, they release inheritance. What you need is inheritance. You cannot pick a mentor in the spirit until there is a man that you call my father, my father. Elisha could not pick the mentor. The first thing that he was supposed to do was to say, my father, my father. Then he was allowed in the spirit to pick an anointing. You cannot be an anointed musician when you have never learned to submit under a father. Some of you, if I rebuke you one day, you stop ushering because prophet rebuked you. It's a spirit of disobedience. It's a spirit of stubbornness. Because when a father is rebuking you, he wants you to be a better person. So you can never be anointed when you cannot sit under discipline. Because you are now your own mentor. You are now your own father. You are now your own elevation. And God will leave you like that. There is a man who had the sons. Some of them were spiritual street kids. That's why God did not even waste his pages mentioning their names. He just summarized them and said, Others. I don't want you in ego life for God to summarize you. For him to say, Abinadab, Eliab, and Shama and others, which means they are not important. They are not submissive. We don't waste pages because the Bible had limited space and the people who were supposed to be mentioned, they were people who were submissive, people who were under discipline, people who had done something worth writing. Because these were minimum pages. Are you worthy being written in this house? Do you know there are some people who will be used by God to be sons to an extent when they are not in the church, you can feel it that they are not there. I want God to raise you to an extent 
that I will know that you were not here in the church. Why? Because of your consistency in the house of God. Hallelujah. Let's all say, Holy Spirit, help us to, to, to be submissive. Help me to be a son in the house. When God is ready to release a wedding on your life or a job, I'm not talking of the jobs that you get in the streets. I'm talking of the ones. There are certain jobs that come from God. Where when you are employed on that company, you enjoy peace. You are loved and you are favored. You are promoted. You are given company cars, company houses, and many other things. Why? Because this thing was not a man thing. It was a God thing. I know some of you, you get jobs because you are educated. But there are some jobs that come because of submission. God locates a father first. Before God blesses you, he must, he must locate your father. Now, I now want to bless this young girl with a, man, with a man who fears God. But please, angels, before you release the wedding, can you bring to us the name of the father, the spiritual father of this lady? In, 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 because we see she goes to ego life. But who is a spiritual father? Is she just there for a miracle? Or she wants anointing? And when angels come and say, no, she goes to eagle life, but prophet Caesar is not a father. Then God will say, but why does she go there when he is not the father of this woman? Then, so, which means she's a church goer. She, she just attends that church. All right, if she's not yet a daughter, please can you suspend that wedding? Why? Because in the spirit, we don't release things to spiritual street kids without an, an address. You must have a spiritual address. You must have a place where you are submissive. You must have a father where you are under. We want to anoint David. Can you go with the horn of oil? The oil will only pour on the sun. Those others, they just attend. They are not daughters. They are not sons. Seven of them, Jesse had eight sons. The prophet was not told the name of the person that he was supposed to anoint with oil. He was told the name of the father who had the son. When God wants to bless you, he locates your father first before releasing your miracle. That okay, he is a daughter of prophet blessing Jesus. Okay, it's now time. Can you go with the miracle? When you arrive in ego life, angels, I am going to show you the person that you are supposed to anoint for what I am saying. Which means Samuel went, he had just the one of oil, but he didn't know whom you are supposed to anoint. He went under the spiritual father of those guys. Others were still hirelings in the house. But there was one who was a son. And God, I've re God said, I've rejected all this. I know you can't anoint them. And the men of God, they said, don't you have any other son? Because the anointing is failing to pour out of the bottle. Because that time it was supposed to pour out on its own. If you were the right candidate. And when David came, the Bible says, God whispered in the ears of the prophet and said, that's the one. Arise and anoint him quickly. And God anointed David. But it was done under the covering. Before demons can challenge me, they must challenge my spiritual father first. That's why demons are very scared of people who have got spiritual fathers. If you are my son, if a demon wants to attack you and kill you, 
That demon must attack me first and kill me. If it can't, then you are safe. Why? Because the devil knows it's a tall order. Because he knows if he wants to attack you, he must attack me first. When he comes to me, he sees I am under a father. Prophet Caesar is a father called Archbishop Asagurupira. For him to destroy me, he must destroy my spiritual father first. And the devil goes to my father to try to destroy him and he discovers that my father, the archbishop, is a son to archbishop Ezekiel Guti. So that chain which you are under, there are many things that are coming down that line. And the devil cannot touch that protocol because it's too much for him. Because for him to destroy me, to destroy you, he must destroy Baba Guti. He must destroy the archbishop. He must destroy then prophet Jesus. If he's able to destroy those two, then he can come to me. So which means where you are, you are protected with a, with a hedge of covering. The devil cannot touch you. Because when he looks at the fathers that are above your father, he gets tired and he just loses interest. So that's why it's important to be under fathers. The horn of oil does not go to your house. It goes to the house of the man of God. That's why sometimes when I prophesy to you, it might be very few times when I prophesy to you, maybe on a cell phone, but most of the times maybe I pick you here, because which means it's a sign that whenever a man of God comes into the house of the Lord, God loads him. A man of God is like a goniot. When he's at home, God packs him and loads him with the stuff, and he releases him to the church. Let's all say God does not go to the bush. He goes to your father's house. Just say, Holy Spirit, give me the anointing of this house in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, which means that David got the anointing of the house. Because David was submissive. If he sent with the 20 sheep, he would not come back with the 19. He would come back with the 20. Even if you, and a lion would try to come and attack the 20th ship, he would fight that lion to make sure faithfully he reports to his father with the number of sheep that the father sent him with. If I send you with money, do you report back with the right change? If I send you with money, do you buy things as you have been told and you come with change or you take some extras? Do you lie that prophet a robber came and stole that 1,000 that you gave me? I could not reach that place. They attacked me. And you hire some friends to punch you on the mouth. You come bleeding. Do you come back with the ship? If I tell you to lead a family fellowship, do you keep the people that you have been told to lead? Or do you lose them? Do you fight for them from lions? Because that's what attracts the anointing. That loyalty, that submission is the one that makes people to be anointed under fathers. How faithful are you? When I'm not there, with what you have been given. How faithful are you with your character? How faithful are you with your life? How do you conduct your life as an usher when prophet is not there? In the bush there, when no one is seeing you, that's what makes when an anointing comes, when a promotion comes, God will disqualify all others and pick you who was faithful outside. Do you know there are many people who are faithful here in the church, but outside they are wild animals. Outside, they, they behave like little demons. 
to an extent even your parents they don't want even to come to ego life because they will be saying if she's behaving like this or he's behaving like this how can i go to that church what does that prophet teach them you can make someone not repent by the way you are living just to say holy spirit help me say holy spirit touch me with the anointing with the power of the holy spirit let me be loyal let me be submissive let my heart be turned to my father in the name of jesus i said there are nine fathers in a in a human being's life number one you have what is called the nine fathers we have got a heavenly father Luke 11 verse 2 when we pray we say our father who art in heaven number two you have got what is called your father there are some people with what is called father in Christ your father in Christ this is the person who brought you to Jesus because I know some of you before you came to ego life maybe you were in another church where you got born again some came here when they were already born again so that one is called your father in christ i i was born again through a certain man of god before i came to meet the archbishop so he or she is the one through whom you gave your life to christ and you became a born again christian so God can send people to us who can bath us into the Lord. People who can release us into the Lord. Then there is the third father that I'm talking about who is your father in the ministry. Your father in the ministry in brackets, your spiritual father. So some people I can become, I can be both your father in Christ and your spiritual father. But some people, I am your spiritual father, but I was not your father in Christ. There is a man of God, an Apollos, that was used somewhere before to me, Paul. So Apollos planted, and I am watering. I am now a father that is growing that ministry in you. That is now grooming and fathering that thing that God has put in you. So many people, they confuse there. I have got a man so, uh, who led me to Christ. He cannot come and claim that he is my spiritual father. I honor him, I respect him, but when God was now lifting me, God showed me a father in ministry, Archbishop Asa Gurupira, to groom me, to nurture me, in my gifting to release me and give me inheritance so god gives me inheritance through that man so this your father in the ministry this is the person who birthed you into the ministry of the lord he is a person whom god is using to birth you in ministry to birth you in your calling in your talent so everybody needs a spiritual father to prosper if you want to make the sky your beginning not your limit you need a father a businessman needs a spiritual father a soccer player needs a spiritual father an athlete who is running needs a spiritual father a musician needs a spiritual father an usher needs a father. A couple that wants to get into marriage, a, a to-be couple, they need a spiritual father who imparts values of marriage. If you don't have a father in the spirit, you are missing a lot of blessings. You cannot excel in life 
like a man who has a spiritual father. Because I have got a father who can rebuke me and say, Jesus, this is wrong. When people are saying, Jesus, you are wrong, my father can come and say, no, you are correct. So he shapes you, he guides you. That's why there are some moments when I don't answer people, but my father answers. Like that issue of the prophecy. That's why the archbishop had to send the DVD. It's the covering. He was saying, all pastors, all men of God in Zimbabwe, face me on this one. Leave my son alone. So everywhere, the father was defending me, teaching people, and some were kneeling. Oh, we didn't know, we didn't know. We ask God, may God forgive us. So your father covers you. The reason why many people are not prospering is because they don't have covering. When you denounce my covering, you don't go anywhere in life. Because you cannot fight some of those battles. They need the prophet. They need my covering. In the spirit, demons will just see the covering of the prophet and they can't come near you. Do you know some of you, you are living right now because of the covering of this house. You travel up to Arare, you come back every time you are commuting. Other people are dying in car accidents. Sometimes when you are going to Arare, you see dead people who have died in car accidents being covered by red blankets from Zetarapi. But you, you are just watching them. Are you clever? It's the covering of the house. It's the anointing of that house that some of you, you were supposed to have been buried. But when God sees the covering which you are under, it's too powerful. Because our covering is a covering with long life. Because the archbishop is still alive. Baba Guti is still alive. So it's a sign that you cannot die early. You are also going to die in a good old age. So a covering is very, very important, brethren. Fathers are important. Let's just say fathers are important. A soccer player with a spiritual father is different with a soccer player who is a pastor that prays for them. But some in soccer, they can come and say, you are our pastor, just pray for us. But there are some who have said, no, you are my father. Father, me, man of God, in this talent that I have. Now I will be laying hands on you, imparting inheritance. Others can get injuries. So you find out even light, limelight will be on you. Why? Because it's no longer you now, but it's now that covering of your father. That is now making you to excel. It's not every man of God who can be your father. So which means someone can be your pastor, but they cannot. There is a difference between your pastor and your father. I can see some people, they are very shy when I visit them to introduce me to people that this is my spiritual father. You find out they are embarrassed. Why? Because they have no knowledge. Some because maybe I am younger than them. So they, it, it feels like foolishness for them to tell people that this man who has come is my spiritual father. Because they are afraid to be challenged. Ah, oh, how can this be your spiritual father? He looks younger than you. Because they don't understand the depth of a father. If they knew, they would actually introduce me quickly and with zealous and with joy. If they had knowledge. But you find out if you have no knowledge, you are not confident, you are not sure of what you are doing. Let's just say hallelujah. So which means someone can be your pastor, but he might not be your spiritual father. But here I'm not talking about a pastor. If you say prophet Caesar is my pastor, yes, it's okay, I will pastor you to heaven. But there is another level called a father. 
It's a level in the spirit now, which is different from a pastor. I have no problem with the people who say, this is my pastor, prophet she's. It's correct. But what you get is at that level. You, now, if I am your pastor, you cannot pick a mentor. Because mentors are not picked by members. Mentors are, are picked by sons. When we are now talking of a mentor, now look at me. If you are in business, when a mentor of business comes upon you, or when you are a musician, a mentor makes you to have a name. A mentor makes you to be an authority. There are some musicians, when their names are mentioned, everyone turns. There is a shift in people's hearts. Why? Because they are now authorities. When you say Charles Charamba, he's a guru. He is now an authority. You can't compare him with a new musician that is coming. So, I, so when you have a father in your life, you become an authority in your sphere of influence. You are no longer an author of books, but you become a renowned author of books. Number four, biological father. This is the father from whose seed you were born. And I said you must honor him. Number five, a substitute father. Substitute father. This is a type of a father who often replaces the biological father. Maybe their biological father is unavailable because of death, divorce, ab abandonment. So the, 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 this substitute father comes in like a mentor, like a guardian. He might be uh, your uncle or even, even your brother can take that position and become a substitute father. Number five. Number six, some of you right now, maybe you are not yet at that level, but in life, you have a father-in-law. As long as you are going to marry one day. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have a father-in-law. He is part of a father. Number seven, there is a father of a church. A father of a church this is the father who is the founder of the church where you are under. He is the father in the sense that he gave birth to that church. There are fathers who have begotten us through the gospel according to 1 Corinthians 4.15. Where he says, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. You may have many mentors. Instructors are mentors. You can have thousands of them, but you can only have one father. You can take Joyce Mayer as your mentor or Creflo Dollar as your mentor on television, but you can only have one father. But there is a father who, when he comes, we also call him father. And he's the Archbishop Asa Gurupira. A father of the church. He is the father of Faith in God Ministries International. That's why he corrected us sometime and said, No, I'm not a spiritual grandfather. I am a spiritual father. When I come, he is our father. He's the father of the church. Let's also say the father of the church. So he is not with you every day. He, he, he doesn't know even maybe your life, your character. And he might not necessarily attend your fu a funeral at your house. But he's the father of the church. So when he comes, that doesn't disqualify him from being the father. So when he comes, including me and all of us, we say, our father has come. 
Because for this ministry to be there, that man was the one that God used. He's the founder of Faith in God Ministries International. Then there is a father, number eight, a father of a movement. These are now big people now. They are revivalists to whom we give honor. For example, father of a movement, we talk of Abraham, Galatians 3, 7. He says, know it therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So Abraham is seen in the Bible as the father of faith movement. Faith, faith, faith movement. He is our father of Christianity. So he is the father of a movement. We are his seed. Then we have got people like Kenneth Huggins. Kenneth Huggins was a father of modern faith movement. And a father of sound doctrine. Many pastors right now, they ate from the books of, the, of, of Kenneth Hagin. The son is now an old man right now. But some of you, if you go anywhere, you can still get the books of Kenneth Hagin. He's a father of a movement. He taught us the word. He was teaching any subject. Teaching about the Holy Spirit, teaching about tongues, teaching about this and that. So any subject which you want to know in the body of Christ, Kenneth Hagin is a book that he left, that he wrote for that particular topic. And it's exhaustive, and his teachings are deep and very sound. So these are fathers of movements that are raised by God. Like Baba Guti in Zimbabwe, he is a father of Pentecostalism. So all pastors, all prophets, when we we'll see this man, everyone wants him to lay hand on you. On, 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 everyone wants to be laid hands by this man. Why? Because to us, he is a standard of what God can do to a man. Of how God can bless a man of God. So we look up to him as an example because he's a father of movement. So when he tells you don't touch this area, we don't touch because he has seen it all. He has seen it all. So these are fathers that we honor. Even though I am a father to Eagle Life Assembly, when the archbishop comes, I honor. When Baba Guti comes, I don't say Baba Guti, I say father. Because he's a father of a movement that has blessed this nation. So we honor him in this nation because he is the one who we look up to. When pastors in Zimbabwe, apostles have questions, they go to that man with all their churches and say, Baba, there is an issue which is troubling us in the house of God. How can we deal with this issue? And then he speaks. He speaks to EFZ. He speaks to all these bodies that are there. Let's just say fathers of movements. So people like the late John Wesley was the father of hymns, modern day hymns, father of Methodist church movements. So you find out there are things that they did which helped us in the spirit. Then number nine, there is a father in sin. A father in sin. Father in sin. S-I-N. Sin. A father in sin can be even a woman. It can be any person. This is a person who introduced you to sinning. They introduced you to evil. They can introduce you to prostitution. Any person, a young man who comes and introduces you to stealing or any other thing is a father in sin in the spirit. And the demons, they respect that man. Because he's fathering you to sin. If you have a friend in the church who is fathering you to sleep around with men, she is your father in sin. And the devil loves such people because he is using them to destroy your life. They will tell you after prophet has finished preaching, I ah, don't listen to everything prophet says. Because now this is now your father telling you now. Now listen to me. Let's go. Ah, let's go. 
wear, wear, wear that miniskirt. Now let's go walk like this. Let's go to and party. And she is the one who buys beer for you. And says, no, today you are not taking seven pints. You are taking nine. Today we want to be drunk, baby. We want to see clouds and everything. Your father in sin. And you salute her and she teaches you. So these are the nine fathers that a man can have in life. But there are some who are good whom I want you to choose there. And that's why I said among all these people they are all important but the two most the significant whom I'm putting emphasis on is your spiritual father and your biological father. Those people are very important to you. Now can you write the power of fathers? The power of fathers. Number one, fathers have power to bless and to curse. It's a power. Now, what happens is when you just disappear, you come and say, Prophet Jesus, I want you to be my father. And then after some time, you disappear from me without telling me that I no longer want you to be my father. In the spirit, even if you continue telling people that I am still your father, I am no longer your father. You are no longer under my cover. Because a father, there must be constant touch with that father. Through coming and attending faithfully services, sitting under my teachings, as I put my DNA into your spirit, as I inject you with the doctrine and the word of God. So they have power to bless. A problem that you are fasting for 10 days. When you come to me and I'm eating, I'm, I have got food in my stomach. If I just cough over your problem, it's gone. Because the fathers are given certain authority. There are certain things that I don't waste my time praying for. That's why I was telling some people, do you know that when you are in a crisis, just even beeping my phone, not even, not even phoning me, beeping my phone, demons, they understand what you have already done in the spirit. You have already communicated that I have reported to the center. And demons cannot touch your body. Some of you, you spend too much time praying for things that you are not supposed to spend time on. They just need the prophet to cough. When I just touch you whilst I'm sleeping, I will be blessed. And I sleep after that. You see, blessings, doors are starting to open in your life. There is a man of God who dropped an X, an iron X head in water. And he was crying, my father, my father, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 4. He was saying, my father, my, he cried to his father that my X has fallen. Now my question is, when your X of life, when your talent, your gifting has fallen, your marriage has fallen, who do you cry to? He cried to his father and he said, my father, my father, my father, help me, this ex was borrowed. And the father said, can you look for a stick, a stick, imagine, an old stick, a rotten stick. He just said, bring the stick. We don't fast for these things. When you are a son, we are just going to throw a stick in the water because you are a son of the prophet. He was a son of a prophet. And the man of God, Elisha, cast a stick. He said, show me where it has fallen. When you are coming to your father with your problem, you must tell me the truth. Show me. He said, oh my Lord, man of God, it was borrowed. The man of God asked and said, where did it fall? If you have HIV, don't tell me I have got a headache, Baba. Because I will release the anointing on headache and HIV remains. You tell your father exactly what is happening in your marriage. 
Even when your husband is present, but this man beats me. Don't be married to any person. Girls, now let me tell you. Never marry a person who doesn't respect your spiritual father. Why? You are dead before you are dead. My wife is in a safe zone. Why? Because I don't want to disappoint my father, the archbishop. So she's a clever woman. She has made sure she promotes the archbishop. Because she knows the archbishop is the only man who can rebuke me. So my wife knows this, some certain discipline which is in me. I know that ego life, they know my father. So I cannot do funny tricks. So there is a difference between a prophet with a father and a prophet who doesn't have a spiritual father. Because those ones, they know that nobody can rebuke them. But me, I know there is a man who can come in ego life and stand and say, Jesus, sit down. And say, ego life, this man, I'm suspending him. He's no longer your prophet. Six months, no preaching. You and you, you are going to be preaching. Six months. Because he's my father. I have to submit when he's correcting me. And I will sit down for sure for six months and not preach. Sometime when I was in Mfakos, he came to me. I had done something. And he came and he said, your pastor is no longer your pastor for the next three months. He picked a young man called John and he said, this one will be preaching in this church. Six months, Jesus, you are in Asha. I want you to greet people at the door. I joined the ushering team. For three months, I was greeting people. But after that, the anointing that came upon my life. Oh my God. If you listen to fathers, I'm telling you, your life changes. I, I, I was anointed in a mighty way. That week, when I stood to preach, I had never seen an anointing like that in my life. But some people, they'll say, I preach better than my spiritual father. You can't sit me down. Who are you? I'll go and look for other people. And that's how your ministry dies. If my father tells me, jump, I don't say why. I ask how high. You need a man of God to whom you can kneel. So get married to a person who fears someone. You know the man who says, I don't fear everyone, even prophet Jesus. I can kick him. And even try to bring him here and I will show you. I can bring him down. I can reduce that prophet. Who is prophet blessing Jesus to me? And he puts his hands and says, you baby, now come, let's go. Ah, run away. Because if that man is girlfriends, if you say, I will report you to prophet Jesus. You say, I will report you. And even my girlfriend, I will tell him, I can even phone him right now that I have another girlfriend. Who is Prophet Shiza? And you tell you, even bring him here. If you bring him tomorrow, I'm going even to take that girlfriend. She'll be the second wife. She'll be staying here. I want that prophet to see the two of you. Ah, hey. Waparara, you are dead. But you need someone whom when you say, you wanted to beat me. I wanted to phone the prophet. You know, done my baby, I love you. Please. Please, my honey, can I kiss you? Please, please. How many kisses do you want? What, how much do you want today? Then you are in safe hands. Don't marry a person without a father. Who will rebuke them for you? Because the devil is looking for people. He wants to destroy youths. He wants to destroy people in their lives. But you must have a man of God in your life. With an anointing that you respect. 
It's the same. You can't marry a girl that doesn't respect your father. And she says, I don't even see him. When he's preaching, I don't even know him. Yes, I come to his church because of you, baby. I just love you only. That's why I'm in ego life. I'm for you. I'm coming because of you, not prophet Jesus. Ah, uh, cut Jezebel. You are dead. You are marrying Jezebel. Eh? Number two, they occupy the seat of authority given by the Lord. It's a seat which they are given by the Lord. So they occupy that seat. They occupy a seat of authority given by the Lord. That seat, demons respect it. Sometimes even sending a message, you don't need me even to pray for you. Just sending a WhatsApp that prophet, I am in this problem. Please pray for me. It's enough. Even if I don't reply, heaven will reply. Why? Because you know your center of authority and power. Number three, there is a tremendous power released when a father speaks a blessing over a son. There is tremendous power released when a father speaks a blessing over a son. And mind you, when we are talking of sons in the Bible, God does not usually use daughters. We are all sons, including even the ladies. So usually it's biblically and theologically 100% correct to say to uh, my daughter and say, how are you, my, my, my son in the spirit? Sons in the spirit. We are talking even of ladies. Though, some, uh, though in these days, we just have to say daughters because some may have no knowledge about some of these things. They need to go to Bible school. Number four, your relationship, submission and loyalty, your relationship, submission and loyalty to such an authority like a spiritual father is vital for your existence on earth. Your relationship, submission and loyalty under a spiritual father, that relationship is vital for your existence on the face of earth. Number five, a father assigned to you by God is an authority in your life. A father assigned to you by God is an authority in your life. Seven signs of sons and daughters in the house. Seven signs of sons and daughters in the house. Number one, a son or a daughter in the house resembles his father. Resembles his father. John 14 verse 9. It says, Jesus said unto them, Have I been so long time with you? And yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He hath seen me, hath seen the Father. Ministerially, when you see my sons and my daughters, they must resemble my spirit. They must resemble my anointing. In this house, we have got standards. We have got philosophies. When we are talking of philosophies, it's the general thinking which is in the house because ego life is a house with the philosophies. It has its standards. It has its core values. It has its vision. So which means 
You must sing my, the vision. You must know the vision. You must know the doctrine of the house. No, if you are in a prophetic house, I was saying even to the morning service that you cannot be taught about prophecy by a person who does not come from a prophetic house. You have to sit them down and say, no, I live in this house every Sunday. So we know about prophecy. Sit down. You, we have to teach you about this, this thing called prophecy. Well, so many people are being taught theoretical knowledge, which is researched in books and not balanced by practical. But you are seeing the practical knowledge. You live in a house where there is practical demonstration of prophecy and the fulfillment of prophecies. We have a core value, honor and fear God, number one, faith, strong marriages, servanthood, accountability, excellence, and love. But in equal life, we have got a core value called uncommon excellence. Which means when people look at you, they must see uncommon excellence. If you are under me and you are catching the... I want you to buy the DVD which I preached in the morning because this one is part two. How to catch the spirit. Though there, there are some similarities, but there is certain information which I want you, you... The anointing can be caught by listening to the tapes of your father. By reading my books. If you want my anointing, it's very easy. You must buy my books, read them over and over again. Then you pick my spirit. If you want, you buy DVDs, CDs, play them in your car, in your house. And listen until the spirit of the father of the house is now living in you. So you must have the vision. It must be flowing in your blood. It must be part of your DNA. All my sons, all my daughters, they must carry my spirit. They must carry my anointing wherever they go. And it, there must be a common trend of certain blessings that are common and uniform. They, they might be not many. Some of you might get other big things. But they must be things that shows you are from ego life. I gave an example of one of my sons in this house. His boss came last week with him. He is here, though I will not lift him. They came in my office and the boss was saying, Prophet Caesar, this position which we, we, we put this young man, when he came for interviews, he was told, let and he came not well prepared. He failed the interview. Came again another one. He failed the interview. But I convinced the management that I am not an Eagle Life member. But I believe in Prophet Caesar. This boy is from Eagle Life Assembly. Please employ him. You will not be disappointed. Because I once visited their church in the youth ministry. How they are taught the word of God employ this boy and he said the boss said let's try him and he didn't know they tried him and he came and he said prophet all bosses are talking about this young man the excellence in the way he does things our company has improved because he has uncommon excellence they were in my office i just looked at him with an eye and I said, you caught the anointing. Because when you are a son of the prophet, when you are son of prophet Caesar, my spirit must live in you. My anointing must live in you. The way I dress, look at the way I dress. I don't wear Christmas tree colors. I know how to match things. I know where blue must go and where black and white must go. But if I come to your house or you are coming to church, you are wearing a green shirt, a red tie, a yellow jacket and a brown trousers. Whose father do you belong to? Who is, whose son are you? If I come in your bedroom, I have to see uncommon excellence in your life. The way you do your bedding, the way you, because me in my house, I know where my socks stay. 
I know where my ties stay. Not some of you, you take two hours looking for a tie. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? I think it was last week. I can't entertain a young girl who goes in a toilet at the church and after leaving the toilet, we have to call the cleaning department. You are living in a house. You go in the toilet. You urinate in that toilet. And you leave the toilet without being flushed. Whose daughter are you? Everyone is seeing your urine. You come from chicken life assembly, not eagle life assembly. Because if you are my daughter, you must resemble my spirit. You must resemble my standards. Or can I speak to somebody? You must resemble what the prophet believes. An eagle bathes every morning. It produces steam and it bathes its feathers every morning for an hour. How many hours do you bath before coming to sleep? You can't come to ego life smelling. We are eagles. We bath ourselves. We perfume our bodies. We are not chickens. Can I speak to somebody? Oh. I don't move with people smelling sweat. Don't behave like a wind in a commuter omnibus. You are an eagle in the mighty name of Jesus. If God makes you to be a wind in a community armed bus, people must see a brand new wind. Ladies must say, we have never seen a wind who smells good perfume. You'll be saying, can you give me money? People are scenting perfume in the combi. That's an eagle, not a chicken. Brothers in this church, you must learn to buy deal. Not coming putting lemons. <laughs> Buy roll on. Put roll on on your armpits. Perfume yourself. When you are employed, the way you dress, carrying your portfolio, they must see Prophet Jesus. The way you greet people, your confidence and everything. They, uh, sister, are you here? Mama. They, uh, Because you are an eagle. Not double trouble that I always talk about. Your mouth, your armpits, everything. They say hallelujah, lifting double trouble coming up. <laughs> I am a man of uncommon excellence. If you stay with me, you will have a touch of excellence. Because even matching my shirts, it takes time. It's not easy. My daughters that I'm living with in my house, they are now experienced in that. Because some of my clothes, even to iron them, you need an anointing. Because if I give some of you girls to iron my clothes, you start to pray and fasting. That Lord, I pray that I don't bend this out. How do you, do you iron it? Do you, what do you do? You need the spirit of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus. You need the anointing of the house. You must resemble your father. Even the brothers in this church, you must have order. Not coming in your room, I see stockings are on top of the refrigerator. Another one is inside the deep freezer. What type of a, of a man are you? Say hallelujah. We want to see young people who are smartly dressed. Even when you are on the drums, you must be smartly dressed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Touch, me. touch me. Give me the anointing yeah. of my father. Can I conclude on number one? We want some more points. Yeah. All right, let me now release them quickly. Number two. A son or a daughter is forever. Can you just write that? 
a son or a daughter. That's why we have a saying, I am an ego for an ego for life and an ego for heaven. All egos in the house full of full of full of full of all sons of our father prophet blessing Jesus the sons of prophet blessing Jesus repeat again they are They are eagles for sure, not for fake. They are for sure eagles. When you look at them, the way they do business, you see an eagle. Even when you start a restaurant, I want to see an eagle type of a restaurant. When you are selling tomatoes, I want to see an eagle type of a market. An eagle cannot sell freezes that are smelling fish. Because that's being chicken and fishish, I don't know. You must know that freezes, you, you, you make sure that you have cleaned your deep, deep freezer. You, you know, so they are, you, long back, I, I, I used to hate some freezes. I love freezes sometimes. I, I, because I grew up with the freezes. I had no money. So freezes, they groomed me. They nourished me for some time. I would buy a loaf of uh, half bread and freeze it because I had no money. Yeah. So sometimes even where I am, I, I have that desire to just uh, drink and uh, freeze it because of where I came from. But there are some freezes, they would smell fish, which means this woman is mixing uh, freezes with fish. So you don't get clients. When you are living such a life. First John 2.19. They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us. They would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out. That they might be made manifest. That they were not all of us. Did you know this verse? <laughs> There are people who leave the ministry. It's God who makes them to go out. Because God wants the sons to remain. When a church is starting, there are people that come to help you to start the church, but they are not your members. They are just sent by God to announce you to the community. But after some time, the Bible says they went out from us, but, but they were not of us, though they were with us. But if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Can you clap hands for that verse? First John 2.19 So you might ask, ah, there is a man that I used to know in this church. This is the answer. They went out from us. They went out from our number. That is amplified. But they did not really belong to us. Oh, this is powerful. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they withdrew that it might be plain that they were, they, that they all are not of us. Hallelujah. But sons and daughters, they remain forever. Number three, sons and daughters, they trust their father for everything. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Lead us not into temptation, but lead, deliver us from evil. Sons and daughters trust their father for everything. Number four, a son or a daughter honors his father. Malachi 1 verse 6, a, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? 
A, a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then be a, I be a father, where is my honor? That's why I no longer entertain pastors who want to join my ministry with the title pastor because I have passed through a lot of disappointments because most of them they don't have your DNA when they are with you they want what they learned from where they came from to be implemented in a unique vision this is a unique vision so you cannot have a Mazibaba type of running of a church here. If I am to raise pastors in ego life, I will raise from within the house. So what you are going to see if I am to release pastors, I am going to release people like Emmanuel. Pastor Emmanuel, whom I picked, I groomed, they have my DNA. So if you release such people, it's slow but sure your growth. But I have tried it since mid-90s. I have been taking pastors. I pastored in Mfakose. I pastored in Budiriro. I, I took many. And right now, all of them, I don't know even where they went. Why? Because they didn't have my spirit. They could not partake of my seed because they were pregnant already how can you impregnate a pregnant woman <laughs> because they are pregnant of a staff from the ministry where they came from and maybe the pregnancy is nine months and you are trying to command another pregnancy you want your baby also to be in that womb there is no woman who can get pregnant while she's pregnant and say my wife you are now three months pregnant, but my wife, we want twins. I now want to release another twin. Another second child. It can't. Because the egg has been fertilized already. So I want children that I've groomed. When you lift them and you give them, no matter how much they suffer, they will never betray you. Because a son honoreth his father. Because they know for them to be where they are is because of that man. That's why I can never disappoint my father, the archbishop. I can never let down that man. Because I am not a hireling. I was, I was groomed by that man. Since I was a young boy, he saw me growing in the things of the Lord. He has corrected my mistakes and everything. Up to now, he's still fathering me and my marriage and my ministry every day like before. So when you are seeing me right now, I resemble that man. I resemble my father. I carry his DNA. I carry his integrity. I carry his character. I carry his spirit. So I have his teachings. They are rooted. They are in my blood. They are in my capillaries, in my veins, in my arteries. So there is no one who can remove me from him. You can't gossip my father because I carry his blood. is flowing inside. I sent Pastor Mazenge to preach at Pastor Emmanuel's church. When he said, but the prophet, I didn't know. Pastor Emmanuel behaves like you. Even the walking, he walks, you think prophet. Why? Because he sat under me, I injected my teaching, my DNA, my integrity, my everything, my values, my standards, and he carries them. You are saying even when he's speaking some gestures, I said, I don't know. I, because some people, maybe they see it. So it's not a sin for people to see such things. It's a sign you are a submissive son. You are a submissive daughter. Because true sons bring honor. Sons, you can ask them money. Or daughters. 
But you can't ask a hireling for money. If I am in a problem, I can come to a daughter and confide a, my situation in a daughter and she will never parade me outside. That our prophet, do you know he has a problem? Those are not daughters. But the sons and daughters, they cover their father. They protect the integrity of their father. I can actually come to a son and say, can I have $20 just to test? But you can't say that to a hireling because he wants the $20 from you. But a son, a daughter, you can ask them and they can give you. There is one time a bishop found me and, she's a, and said, she's a, I had received the money. And he said, my son, can I have $6,000? Six thousand. It was a lot of money. But because I was a son, I wired the money to him. And then after a, a week, then he said, Chisa, go to your account. I saw the money was wired back. He said, you are a true son. Because a son, you can ask, you can lift a knife over your son Isaac is in Abraham and say, Isaac, I, I am about to give you as a sacrifice to God. Isaac, I'm giving you as a sacrifice to God. Isaac was a grown-up young man. Yeah. And this was an old man. He could have fought his father. But because he was a son, the Bible says Jesus is like Isaac. He was submissive to the cross. Isaac carried the wood and he was willing to die can I lift a knife and say, give me 6,000, give me money on some of you. That is the day that you live ego life. <laughs> because if I can't lift a knife over you, you are not yet a daughter, you are not yet a son. I must be able to lift a knife of discipline. I must be able to correct you. And if you still justify yourself, then you are not a daughter, you are not a son. Sons, they say, Papa, I am a son. When I suspend you, you don't hide your suspension. It must be open that I've been suspended by my father. There is a time I even suspended Pastor Emmanuel two months. And he was still coming to church, doing what I had told him to do, and not doing what I had told him not to do. Two months I suspended him. Another time I suspended him three months. And said, no preaching, no what, sit down. Because I'm instilling sonship in someone. So such people, when you release them, their churches, they grow very fast. Why? Because they are carrying the anointing of multiplication which I carry. But if you release a hireling, they struggle. Until you have learned to be. So some of you, you are seated here, but you are not yet sons. You are not yet daughters. Number what? Number five. Sons obey their fathers. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for which is right. Honor them. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Obey children in equal life. Obey your, your parents. Prophet and prophetess Jesus in the Lord as his representatives. For this is just and right. So true children, they obey what they are told. Number six, sons and daughters do what they see their father do. John 5, 19b. 19 portion B. John 5, 19. The son cannot do anything by himself, but what he sees the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. Jesus never did anything that he didn't see his father do. 
You will never see me divorcing my wife because I have never seen my father doing that. I do what my father does. So there are certain things that I am doing as a prophet which I saw the archbishop. No, but he didn't teach me. I observed his life. I just learned there are some things which you need to learn by observation. Just observing the prophet's life. You can learn a lot of things. But if you are not willing my spirit to be in you, then it can't be in you. You can still come here in your sweat smelling very bad in ego life. It's very possible. It's a sign you are miscarrying the anointing. You are aborting the seed. There is what we call spiritual abortion. Where people don't want to be impregnated by the vision of the house. They don't want to be impregnated by the spirit of the father. They abort it. They miscarry it in the spirit. This he doeth likewise as a son. Number seven. Sons believe and market their father. They believe they market, they talk good about their father. You will never hear Jesus anyway speaking bad about his father. Luke 23 verse 46. When Jesus had cried out with a loud voice on the cross of Calvary, he said, Father, into thine hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now, I want you to see something that I want to show you here. Jesus had said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakatanai. Which means, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because when Jesus was on the cross, God turned his back on Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was carrying all your sins. And God cannot look at sin. He had to turn his back on Jesus. And Jesus, for the first time, he felt the presence of his father leaving him. Jesus never cried when they were removing his beard. When they were flogging him with whips that had bottles and nails and plucking off skin and flesh from his back, he never cried. But when the anointing, when the presence of God left Jesus, that is the first time you hear him crying with a loud voice, My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Because he was used to live with the presence of God. He had never experienced that in his life. To have the presence of God leave him. But when the presence of the father left him, he believed that he can still in that condition commend his ghost to the father. A human being has got two types of sleeps. There is another sleep which when you sleep you never wake up. That is death. Your ghost goes out. You can actually sense when your ghost is going out. I once had that experience. It's different from this breath. When you are losing breath, when you are fainting, there is a difference between fainting and giving up your ghost. Because that ghost is the one that makes you to live. He is the inner man. Do you know that in a hospital, if a Christian is there who is our member. If we don't visit them, even when they were not supposed to die, but because of stress and discouragement, a human being can give up the ghost. It's not everyone who died who was supposed to die. Some it was surrendering. That's why I can remove a person from ICU on a trip because when a person is on ICU, on in the ICU, on those trips, they are more spiritual than when they are walking like you. Because they will be closing their eyes, but they will be seeing you. They will be hearing your voice like thunder. A person in ICU, don't think they don't hear. That's why many people have killed their relatives, because they come and say, Apera, apara, and they will be hearing you. 
And you say, ah, the child even died in the accident. I don't think she will also live. In that accident, she doesn't know. We have not told her. Do you know she will be hearing all what you are saying in that coma? Even more louder than what you are saying. So when I enter in ICU, I don't make jokes of speaking negative things. I speak to a person, some nurses at you, matter day, they now know me of discharging people from, my, from ICU because I know how to deal with the spirit of a man. I speak to the ghost that, sister, I know you are hearing me. You are even seeing me. You are going to leave. You are going to leave this ICU. Most people that I have prayed for in the ICU, there is no prayer that I offer. I open the word and I read Psalms 91. The Lord is your shepherd. Even Psalms 23, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He shall make you to live. In green pastures, I lead the word. I speak life. I say you are going to be. When you come back, you will hear. And now they are now talking. Why? Because I have removed the ghost from where it was going. Or from the pathway of death. And I bring it back with the word of God into a pot. Because a human being is a spiritual being. You must market your father if you want blessings. What makes me to arise and prosper among other pastors? I was telling some other pastors, it's the way I market my father. It's the way I love my father. Sometimes I've removed cars and given him. I've given him almost four cars. When my father visits me, I make sure he does not go empty-handed. I try to do something. To bless him. We take things, our phones with my wife, our perfume suits, whatever, that Baba, you cannot go out of our house empty because I love him so much. And I have seen it has made me to prosper. It has made me to excel above my, some of my brothers. There is not even one day with my wife where we can agree or we can tempt or try to gossip our covering. You can't gossip my father in our house. We will check you out. My wife will open the door for you. She has done that to some pastors. Opening the door and say, Pastor, I think you don't know where the exit is. Can you leave? I'm telling you the truth. My wife will open the door and release you out. Because she will tell you, we don't want cases. Because when you gossip your umbrella, you are creating holes on the umbrella. And the serpents can cripple in. You can't urinate on my well, in my well. A man of God is your well. It's a miracle. And you see someone urinating where you are going to. It's next Sunday. You want to come and drink from that well. And you leave them alone. No, you must show them the road. Even as a, as a prophet as I am, if big people who, giants or people who play karate, if they want to beat Archbishop when I am there, I would defend him. It's better they kill me. They can't kill my father when I am there. That's how deep in my heart I love my father. Long back before I was a, a mature Christian, I was still a young Christian, three weeks in the Lord or so, one month, one boy came, Archbishop was preaching, and he started shouting vulgar language. Long back before I was born again, I used to play karate. I had a black belt in karate, but I can't fight. I took that young man by the head, silently, people were not seeing. I went with him in the toilet, on the walls. I said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name. Don't do that again. Five times he had some big swellings on his. And it was reported to the archbishop that there is a boy who came with the mother. He has bororindos and everything on the head. What happened? The mother was shouting. And people said, it's Brother Chisa, I was called. Brother Chisa, what happened? I said, Baba, this man spoke bad things about you. So I just wonder if the Bible says the rod of correction does not move from the back of a foolish man. So I just wanted to give him a little bit of Holy Ghost discipline. 
He said, no, my son, you don't do that. He said, I heard you were doing it in the name of Jesus. On the walls in Jesus' name. But I'm not encouraging you to do that. I was still a new convert. Hallelujah. Don't give some people a Holy Ghost past. Or when you talk good about your father, God begins to talk good about you. When you defend your father, God begins to defend you. When you mind your father's business, God begins to mind your own business. The Holy Spirit will lift you up. Hallelujah. There is an anointing that is released when you speak just about your father. Business doors can just open just by talking about your father. My father, the prophet. Amen. And the business doors start to open. Because they have an authority upon their lives. Why am I teaching you these things? Because I know. In fact, I once told you of the way we once gossiped the archbishop with my wife but in fact we were not gossiping him as such but we were listening to people that were gossiping him and never challenged them or answered or defended our father and the poverty that we experienced that time it was never seen in our lives Archbishop would come and say, Chesa, are you my son? Because I don't think, ha, huh? because I know the anointing upon me. You, you cannot suffer like this. Because pastors under me, I know the anointing that follows me. I know what it means to gossip your cover. I have gone through it, I have seen it, and please don't go that road. I beg you, my children, don't go that road. I know. I don't need anyone to teach me. Ah, it's easy. If you want to try it, gossip your father. You will see how good it is. <laughs> it's very easy. Your life will report on its own. Things will start to show. God will be against everything that you are doing. Against everything that you touch in your life. He will be a witness against you. Can we stand on our feet? Tell the person next to you, it's, it's allowed to gossip your father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, uh, it's uh, true. Uh, uh, should I, but uh, when we are teaching the word of God, we are not saying don't do it. But we are teaching you to know what you are not supposed to do. That's why I'm, I, because I want you to know that God will never disallow you to do anything. He will allow you to do it. Ah, because even if we say it's not allowed, but some of you, you allow it. Which means it's allowed. But what makes the difference is obedience. How many know that I have got power here. Here to drop this pulpit. Th this pulpit that you are seeing here. I can drop it on the floor. On the, on the, and break it there. And take this microphone, throw it, and break it. And announce that ego life, I'm no longer a prophet. I'm not going to drink beer from today. Do you know I have that power? And I can go and you start to see me drinking. But why is it that I don't do that even though it's allowed? Because I have been taught by the word of God. I have what is called self-control. <laughs> self-control is the one that I use to stop certain things. You have got power, sister, to stop. Because I saw, I saw a certain girl watching some things on the television. I said, huh? And she was not even worried that the prophet has arrived. 
And I said, can you switch the television? And she said, uh, the remote control is somewhere there. <laughs> mm. I said, where is the remote control? She showed me. I switched off the television. What was I trying to tell this girl? The Bible says, don't die. Don't let the evil people kill you whilst you are watching. Have you ever read that verse? You must not die whilst watching a pornography movie because it's in your house. No, take the remote control. Switch it off. You have got power to let's all say switch it off. Switch off the TV. Why do you allow wicked people to kill your spirit, to remove anointing from you? Some of you use the films that are, you are watching are evil. There are things a youth must not watch. How can you watch a sex movie of people who are having sex? Because what that does, it arouses your emotions to, for a man. And where is the man? Are you married? Because maybe married people, if they do that, it might be better they will look for their husband and sleep with their husband. To quench the passions which have been arisen, aroused by, by the movie. That's why many of you, you are into masturbation, you are into many other uh, silly demonic sexual things that you don't understand it's the films that you are spending time watching your own television some of you, you even purchased it with your own money but it's killing you something that i went to pay for i carried it into my house and i allow it to kill me no i will switch it off let's just say switch it off but you can't switch it off if there is no self-control fruit, it's a fruit of the spirit. If it's not their sister, you cannot resist a boyfriend, not your husband, who wants to sleep with you. You just say, ah, Johnny, man, Johnny, ah, Johnny, ah, And you know, there is a Johnny, man, you wish someone would say, it encourages the brother. But Americans, the ladies in America, they have what they call the attitude of an American woman. There is a certain way like a peacock. I don't know how they do it when they stand like this. A man in America knows when a, an American woman does that, I don't know how they do it. But if they does that, you know, you must back off. Because what she has got that at that time, you can, she can fight you. She's saying, no, this area, no. So all American ladies, they do that attitude. And the American men, they know it. Once a woman does that attitude, she's saying, this area, you can't touch it. Habakkuk 1.13, we want to pray now. Some of you, you say, but prophet, is it? Where is a scripture which says we must not watch such things? What does it say? One, two, three. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and you cannot look on iniquity why do you look upon them that deal treacherously and you hold your tongue when the wicked man is devouring the righteous how can you continue watching with your eyes beholding a movie that is devouring you you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look inactively and just looking at a movie when you have got the holy spirit when you have the anointing that is active you cannot look at something inactively upon injustice why then do you look upon the plunderer why are you silent when the wicked one destroys him who is more righteous than he, the Chaldean oppressor? The Chaldean oppressor is.
the amplified in Hebrew they say the Chaldean oppressor is question mark what it means is there are certain things the Chaldeans were doing but you because of the knowledge and the teaching you are supposed to answer the Chaldean oppressor is you are supposed to answer that is not tolerated You can't tolerate Daniel, the king's delicacy. Let them eat, but Meshach, Drek, Meshach, and Abednego will not eat what the king is. But uh, uh, we will eat vegetables, our king. We will not bow down to your golden image. After ten days, test us. You shall see with the vegetables, king, we will be ten times better than your people that you are giving nice food. Because we have anointing. Give us vegetables. We are not eating your, your food that is full of wine and everything. There are things that we must say no to. You don't say yes to everything. Of the Chaldeans. They have their culture. Heathens have their religion. They have their things which they do. As children of God, we can't be seen doing those things. There must be a difference between an ego life member and a chicken life assembly member. I want us to pray right now. I just wanted to ground you today. To teach you about the importance of spiritual fathers. Just to say, Holy Spirit, help me today to understand the importance of fathers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. I can go on and go on. It's a very long topic which I cannot finish now. Just to say, Holy Spirit, now begin to pray. Say, Holy Spirit, help me, my Father, to be a great woman, to be a great man in the presence of the Lord. I pray for your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, anoint me with your power. Anoint me with your presence. Anoint me with your anointing. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Let's all say, Holy Spirit, help me by your grace, by your anointing. I want to rise. I don't want to open my umbrella, to create holes on my umbrella because of ignorance, because of lack of knowledge. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help me, Lord, by the grace of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Papa, for your grace. Brethren, this message is not a forced message. I am preaching from the word of God. That's why I was giving you scriptures on everything that I'm saying. But it's about your choice. It's about your choice. It's about your choice. I have seen in the spirit that when you are under a man of God, respect that man of God. No matter how close you are, honor that man of God. I was teaching to some of my children who moves with me frequently that do you know that some of you you are now treat you there is a scene where you end up treating an uncommon man common i was teaching in Kweku where i went of teaching on the scene of treating an uncommon man common it's a sin to treat an uncommon man like a common man where I am with the visitors, you just come and you knock in my office. You open my door without knocking when there are visitors because you are now close, so close to the prophet. There is no more protocol in your body. You can't, no matter how much I joke and laugh with you, you cannot go to an extent of start laughing and tapping on my shoulder and hitting my shoulder. Once you are doing that, you are dying. I am now your friend. And when I'm now your friend, 
Can, can you come, Tapuma? If you want to be anointed by God, you must always on step number one there. The moment in the spirit, when you come where I am standing, I cannot rebuke this level because we are now friends. That's why I have no friend in ego life. From morning, say, my friend is only my wife. I have no friend. I want to maintain distance so that there is a flow. You must make. And you, as a child, make sure, even when I joke with you, don't have self control. No matter how much God uses you, pray for humility. If you see your heart now wants to bubble above your father, that I am now anointed, I can now preach more than a prophet. I can now do this. I can now be used by God. That is death. At that moment, you capture your heart and you say, you listen to me. You must be humble. Be submissive. And you force yourself to kneel down and to humble your heart before that man. So that your spirit is all. That's why the Bible says humble yourself. Which means you have potential to humble yourself. God does not come and force humility. You are the one who humbles yourself. If you see you are growing wings. Remove them on your own. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Sometimes in the spirit. You know, when God, There are some times when God uses me. In a mighty way. When I went to Mother Day. Stretching my hands on incubators. Children were shaking in incubators. Just stretching my hands. And the nurses started clapping their hands. We have never seen it. Even my child, I did this, he was moving in the incubator. And when you come out, because I'm a human, you can feel some wings growing. Of pride. move away. But a wise person, you remove the wings. Ah, I want more from God. Be humble. Chisa. Be humble. Prophet Chisa. Humble, 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 humble. So you have to put your body under subjection and force it to be humble, no matter how much God has used you. It's painful. But when the body is in the rightful position, then God can use it. God uses dead people. If you are still alive in pride, you can never see a certain magnitude of the anointing. Babies were shaking in the incubators, just moving. Go, 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 shaking with the anointing of the Lord. And when God has done such a thing, some of you straight away, you come out of that world and you start a ministry called Shaking Incubators Ministries International. Because very few people, and everyone will be telling them. Ah, no. If you see, you are still telling people. People who talk too much about their testimonies are liars. If you want to see a man of God who is a liar, listen, if you meet a pastor who is giving testimonies to my, I prayed for another one. She had a leg that was shorter. I commanded it, it, it started growing. I prayed for another one as well. And this started, and we, we are all listening. Two hours. Two hours. You are the one talking of testimonies. No, let people testify. Let them come and testify. I can entertain one or two, not one hour. There is one man who came. Hey, prophet Jesus, ah, 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 I did this, I did this. I told them that uh, you are now full of pride. Because for the past two hours, you were the one telling me your testimonies. Don't you think, do you know that I also have many testimonies more than what you are telling after I finished that, he said, no, man of God, there is another one that I had forgotten. <laughs> so you can see that he's now possessed with the demon of pride. Because when you are now demon possessed with the pride, you can't see. Do you know that everyone who is proud, they don't see it? It's not easy to see that you are proud. People have to tell you. 
And when they tell you, you think they are now jealous of you. That I know you are now doing, you are now going down. Because destruction comes before. It says pride comes before what? Destruction. I want us to pray right now for the grace of God. Just say, Lord, humble me. Let me just be humble in ego life. I want young people who are simple, just to be simple, but with uncommon excellence, with confidence in the name of Jesus, and obeying and honoring fathers. Let's begin to pray. I don't know how you are going to pray for yourself now. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 pray. Muranda rabeda bebere bebe 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 bebe. Mozanda gaduma balabia banda gadish. We are praying, Holy Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are speaking your anointing. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. May we say Amen. Nine, nine types of fathers. Number one, we have what? Number two, your father in Christ, a person who brought you to. Jesus. Number three, we have a father in ministry, your spiritual father. Number four, biological father, a father from whose seed you were born. Number five, substitute father, which is a guardian like person, a mentor in your family where you come from. Number six, father in law. Number nine, type of father. Number eight, number, sorry, number seven, father of a church. Number eight, a father of a movement. Hallelujah. Number nine. A father in sin. That's why I put him on number last. Because that father also wants a portion among the nine fathers. Let's go to the next notes. The powers of fathers. Number one, a father's power to what? To bless and to kiss. Number two. They occupy a seat of authority given by the Lord. Number three, there is a tremendous power released when a father blesses a son. Number four, your relationship, submission, and loyalty to such an authority under your spiritual father is vital for your existence. You left for your existence on the face of the earth. Number five, a father assigned to you by God is an authority in your life. I had left number six. Number six, can you write? Spiritual fathers, they release inheritance and mentors in people. They release inheritance and mentors. If you want a mentor and inheritance, you must have a father. The last notes. The what? Seven signs of sons and daughters. Number one, what do sons and daughters do? A son or a daughter must resemble the anointing of the father. You must resemble the anointing of the father. Number two. Uh, no, I'm not hearing you. Number two. Number three. Hallelujah. Number four. Number five. Number six. Hallelujah. Number seven. Sons. Let's clap our hands unto the Holy Ghost. I want you to go and study these notes on fatherhood. It's a manual that I'm writing to give even young pastors. There are some young pastors in Arare that I was rebuking who are starting churches. And they are saying that we are fish that has grown bigger than the waters. When you throw me in a fish, in a, in a sea, I splash all the waters. There is no man of God who can contain my anointing. When you have got 20 people that are following you, then you are bigger than the fish, than the waters. So you are telling me, 
who is a man here in Zimbabwe, who is a prophet here in Zimbabwe, who can't kneel in front of Baba Guti? Who has churches in Zimbabwe bigger than Baba Guti? Man, you tell me you have grown bigger than waters. A man who has written 115 books. Who started preaching 60 years ago. <laughs> who has more than 150 nations that he has possessed with churches. 150. Not 115. Then the churches in Zambia will be like in Zimbabwe. In a, you will see on a boat, on, near a bottle store there is a church, on a farm there is a church, everywhere there are churches. Brethren, we are blessed in Zimbabwe. We have got men of God. We have got men of God in this nation who are powerful. We have great men in this nation who have never been written about whom the world is yet to know. We have got big fathers here that can speak life. I thank God most of my friends, they are now realizing it. Because they are here with us. They understand our language. They can hear, they can see, they know what we eat. And they can rebuke us. Even when I say something out, something off, in Shona, they can pick it with the cheese of Adam's hands. You don't say such things on the pulpit. I want you to be submissive. Tell the person next to be submissive. Say, blessed. Blessings, they come when you honor. Say, blessings come when you honor. Say, Holy Ghost, anoint us in the name of Jesus. Now, do I have anyone in the youth service who is in mining? Mining. You are a youth, you are mining. I'm not talking of a person who is not a youth. A youth mining, mining. Can we lift our hands again? I'm releasing things. Anyone who is into mining, come here. You, you are mining somewhere. Come and stand and kneel here. You are involved in a mind somewhere, somewhere. Everyone now lift your hands. Your right hand. Father, I release miners in this church. I release young people who shall go into mining in the name of the Lord. Let them go into mining in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I release mining in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm releasing the blessing of mining in this service. In the name of Jesus, continue lifting your hand. If you believe it, you will receive it wherever you are. I release mining in Jesus' name. Let some youths begin to mine. Let some youths begin to mine gold in the name of Jesus. Mine gold. Mine gold. Equal life youths in Jesus' name. Go into gold mining in Jesus' name. Now listen to me. There is a lot of gold in Matabeleland. Even Below this church, it's gold. Some of you, your houses are built on top of gold. It's too much. It can sustain this nation for the next 70 years. The gold that is in Matabele land here, yeah, it's too much. There is a moment as floods are continuing. Even next year, God was saying there will be some floods in some people places. People in Blawayo, some will be picking gold on top of water, which has been flowed to the river place. Swept. There is a lot of gold. You cannot finish the gold here. 70 years, Zimbabwe cannot finish the gold in this land. There can be more than 30 gold, big gold companies here. When I came, gold showed me. There is a, my house, my house, 
I have a housing stand which I want to develop somewhere there in Parklands. When they were digging there, they found a lot of gold stones. And when I went back, people had looted. There are now holes and everything. They were just coming and taking and looting. Where I want to build, there is gold everywhere. Which means the government can buy that land and say, Jesus, no, don't build here because there is too much gold there. Where there is my stand. Go into gold mining. Go into look for an opportunity to mine gold. You can't finish it. You are losing money by just watching people doing gold. Pray for God to give you an opportunity so that your money is not stolen, but you get into the rightful thing. It doesn't take much to mine gold. So which means anyone in this either way we are going with a compressor of gold, with a mill or anything that is associated with the mining of gold, they will make millions where we are going. They will make a lot of money. People with uh, detectors and so forth because they shall be on demand where we are going. Harare is going to discover the gold that is in Blawai. And you are going to see many people from Harare coming to start to get money in Blawayo. If Blawayo continues sleeping, people from Harare are going to employ people in Blawayo to mine the gold which they are sitting on. Father, I bless your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I release your anointing in Jesus' name. The problem is that people are just going on one same place and dig and re-dig and dig. There are no others who are exploring other places. If you take a detector here in Blawai, just go in Nkulumani and start to move with it, you discover gold. Even on your house. Some of you are going to mine behind their houses. It is going to be allowed here in Blawai for a person to start to mine on some yards. I saw them, the city council and the mining, agreeing that a person with a plot big like this, if they discover gold, they are going to be given license to even mine there nicely. It's coming where we are going. Where you see a person in Mahachula mining on their house, not on a farm. Here they are still allowing pegs to be done on mines, but even on houses, according to the length, there are certain houses, the plot size, they will allow people to mine. Because I'm traveling in the spirit and going ahead. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's all say, Holy Spirit, bless me to invest into mining of gold in the name of Jesus. Let's clap hands for these ones that I have played for. I have released that anointing upon all of you in this house in Jesus' name. This service, you are privileged because I have time to do everything. Hallelujah. I just want to lay this end, this end. Do you see this end? You can be a millionaire just when I place it on your head. Every man of God knows the anointing upon them. I don't need to be told. I have laid hands on some people with the hair that looks like those bushmen from Botswana. Where well, when you even lay your hand, you can sense the poverty even by the hair in your hand. That a woman and a foot zirachu. Even the hair, it's poverty. But those people are now big business people. <laughs> Just touching in your head. You can sense that this type is Aikamike. 
you can't put even a combo. The prophet is reporting even with the type of the hair. But God has blessed those people in the mighty name of Jesus. I, it's your faith. I'm just going to place my hand on you and say, receive everything that you are supposed to receive in this church. The breakthroughs that you are supposed to receive, receive them. Everything you are supposed to receive, receive it. Can you tell God wherever you are? Everybody lift your hands. Begin to tell God what you want when I lay hands on you. Now listen to this. There is nothing that you can receive without it being released. But when God is about to do something, he sends a man to lay hands on you. If you were blind, if I lay hands on you, the scales must fall off. If you were sick, the healing must. Some people are going to be healed here. Yeah. If there is a demon in your body, it has to come out. Can you worship him right now? Open your mouth, begin to pray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus, there is anointing here. Tell him, tell him, brethren, there is power in this building. There is no devil that will be able to stand the anointing that I'm now releasing now. I release the anointing. Power of the Holy Ghost. Any devil in any person, it must go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. When I pray for you, you go and kneel. Now listen. When I pray for you, I want you to go and kneel down. I'm not wasting time. It's just a touch. But my touch is not as simple as you would think it is. Once I touch your head, a cloud of glory will remain in your life. Some of you, you are going to get money. Some of you, you are going to get jobs. Some of you, you are going to get weddings. Some are going to get cars. Some are going to get houses. Some are going to get healings. Some are going to get deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. HIV can be removed. There is an anointing that is now moving. Holy Ghost. Let's just worship him one minute. Just worship him. Worship him.
mentally ill during the service, God has healed him in the mighty name of Brother, now I want you to open this Bible. Okay, let me open a scripture for you. I want us, can you read for me? Give him a microphone. Can you read John chapter 1? This verse here. Can you, can you give him a microphone that can sound? Don't worry. Oh, your eyes are not seeing. All right. I opened the eyes. Devil, lose his eyes. Lose his eyes. Lose his eyes. In the name of Jesus, I free his eyes to see now. The demons that were blinding and blaring his eyes. Are you now? Okay. Okay. Can I give it? Yes. This year. In the... It's John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1. Uh, in the... Mm -hmm. the beginning. In the beginning. In the uh, beginning was the way. Was the way. The word was with God. And the word was, the word was with God. Uh -huh. with God. And? and the word was God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother, you are not free. Mama, your son is now free. Come, Mama. Come, 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 come. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this miracle. I now send this boy back to school. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Touch him also. Power of the anointing. Father, we thank you for this boy. Who was mentally ill, he was running everywhere. They were looking for him, not able to communicate with this boy. But we free him from today. Can you imagine a person who came mentally ill? Look at what God can do. <laughs> Brother, can you stand up? Can you wave to people? Say, I love you. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. What, what, what is your name? Nigel. Huh? Nigel. Nigel. Yes. Okay, where do you stay, Brother Nigel? At BF. At BF. Yes. All right. You stay where? At number what? 226. Number what? 226. Okay. Your son is now free, Mama, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Lord.